Jesus is the bread of life. Eat of him and you shall have life eternal. One of the most popular bread-based dishes is pizza. Let's think of the bread of life like a pizza pie and partition it into segments. Each slice represents a different aspect of the ministry of Christ. For example, love, blessings, and forgiveness of sin are popular fare with most churchgoers. What about persecution, false teachers, and the lake of fire? Are these consumed with equal zeal? I was interested to see from the four Gospels how frequently different topics were emphasized, so I established categories and kept count while reading. Here are the categories I chose. Please take a moment to look through them and consider how you would guess they rank. Despite combing through scriptures carefully, it is possible and even likely I overlooked some items. Furthermore, it is also likely different people would categorize things slightly differently, as well as applying a different threshold for qualification for each item. Nonetheless, this should provide a good base to understand how frequently various topics are mentioned in the Gospels. I will provide examples of the type of items I count it for each category as we go along. Let's take a look at the first slice. This is love and blessings. This is probably the part of the Gospels that receives the most attention. Indeed, it could be said everything Jesus did was through love for the Father and for us. While this slice cannot be emphasized enough, are other slices being emphasized too little? The next slice is hell or the lake of fire or judgment. Christian historians look back on the old days of preaching about hell and fire and brimstone and the fear of God with fondness, and with good reason, considering the frequency of which this topic shows up in the Gospels alone, it would be perilous to ignore it. Strong love for the Father requires strong discipline in order to avoid strong judgment. The next slice is saving us from our sins. This is the cornerstone of our faith. All else is dependent on this for it to not be in vain. We cannot save ourselves nor do any good thing without God. Let's ink this slice slowly so we can savor each bite and fully appreciate it. The next slice is condemnation and resistance of sin and temptation. This is the second biggest slice, yet one of the most dismissed. So many teachers focus on our sins being forgiven by Jesus as if it were a free pass to continue to sin. Instead, we are to walk a new life through his spirit. Stop shouting, your sins are forgiven, while whispering, sin no more. And yes, we all stumble, repent sincerely, and get back up. But don't return to your old ways. The next slice is rebuking the wicked and beware of false teachers. Jesus referred to his opposition as thieves, swine, snakes, fools, hypocrites, and children of the devil, to name a few. In case you are wondering if only he had the authority to cast such judgment, John the Baptist also called them vipers. Today there are still many false church leaders, particularly famous ones, but if you point it out, even nicely, get ready, unbelievably, to hear from the flock that Jesus would never say such a thing. Does anyone actually read the Bible anymore? This slice is well known and is a key focus of most church gatherings, to glorify God and Jesus. Remember to seek to glorify God in all that you do, regardless of whether you are in church or not. We can show we love Jesus by keeping his commandments and seeking his spirit. Rejecting Jesus. This is the biggest slice of pizza in the whole box. Remember, the servant only shares the portion of his master. We are not greater than the one through which all things were made. Because the world hated and rejected him, it will hate and reject us too. The Gospels testify to this throughout. Be sure you don't fit in with the world. If you are not feeling the rejection yet, take heed, it is coming. The next slice is good works. The Gospels are full with references to good works. Many seem to preach that since we are saved by grace, works have no value. How deceitful! Faith without works is dead. 
Grace is the root of our faith, and works are the fruit a saved person will inevitably bring forth. Do you really think anyone who truly lives by His Spirit would return to Him empty-handed? Isaiah 55.11 reads, So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Healing and miracles, seemingly everyone is aware of this slice. Yet sadly, even among Christians, I think many doubt. People don't see the same abundance of miracles today. Of course, for one thing, the Son of God coming in the flesh to live among us doesn't happen every century. Furthermore, recall the faithless people from Jesus' hometown who tried to throw him headfirst off a cliff. The scriptures tell us he did not perform many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And those people believed in his miracles. They could be considered brimming with faith compared to the average modern person. Do take comfort that miracles can and do occur to this day among God's faithful. I have experienced them myself and many others have testified of even greater wonders. But those who don't believe his word or his servants won't believe this either. Here is another understated slice. It is discouraging to see how many professed Christians act like demons are just old concepts for psychological disorders and that Satan is just an allegory for the darkness in our own hearts. How can you battle against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places if you don't believe they exist? How can you call yourself a Christian if you reject Christ's testimony of these spirits? Repent while you still can. I have enough experience with these things to write a book. So did Jesus' disciples, and they did write about it in their books. This is another underpublicized slice. It makes people uncomfortable, talking about forsaking yourself and worldly attachments, and if necessary, even your own family, does not make for a nice, smooth church service, especially if it happens to be Mother's Day. Although many believers do far too little of this, it is a well understood part of being a Christian that we must proclaim the good news and share our testimony. I've testified plenty, but personally struggle with striking up conversations with strangers to share the gospel. The Spirit led Paul to do this with such fluidity. I read in the book of Acts where Paul testified in front of a Roman judge and started with his own testimony. His is a good example to follow. Persecution and suffering, here is another huge slice of the bread of life that is low on the priority list for most to talk about. We do talk a lot, and rightfully so, about the suffering of Jesus Christ, who selflessly died on the cross for our sins. He did this so we wouldn't have to suffer persecution like him, right? Wrong. Sharing in the sufferings of Christ is part of our walk with him. We are now called to be willing to suffer and lay down our lives for him in return. If we take this pizza pie and turn it into a pie chart, we can see all the different categories together. It is interesting to note that the three largest slices are rejection, not sinning, and suffering. These are not the most talked about items in most churches, but they are very important and are topics that come up very often. From there we can see love and blessings and healing us and other positive ones rank high as well. What do you think? Is this pizza pie divided the way you expect it? When looking at all the categories, are you prepared to eat the entire bread of life? Let us pray. Father, we praise you and offer our inexpressible gratitude for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who willingly sacrificed himself to save us and to fulfill your will. We also thank you for the incredible blessings promised to those who endure to the end, which the Gospels reveal. We pray that you will strengthen us to withstand the trials and the tribulations that your word prepares us for. We also give thanks for these as we understand the fire refines us. Father, please help us to remember that all experiences, whether joyful or painful, are an invitation for us to draw closer to you. May we be blessed with your Holy Spirit to guide us to do your will for your glory. 
We pray together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.